Hello, welcome you all. So, we are discussing about industrial screening and so far about the industrial screening we have discussed about the various purposes for which it is the, the used and then we have discussed about the gradually and we have discussed uh, we have started discussion about the the surfaces of open wire screens so we'll continue that open wire screens we'll look at that they are wires of uniform cross section are usually taken for both warp and weft stands this is the warp and this is the weft so basically you have to take uniform cross sections otherwise the aperture sizes will differ and occasionally the diameter of the warp that is what is basically withstanding the maximum load of the particles is greater than the weft. The wear material used depends on the environmental circumstances which means that whether your material is your material what you are trying to screen whether that is abrasive, whether your water pH is little bit acidic and whether you are having some other because the screens are normally open to the atmosphere. So, whether you have got some nearby some chemical industries or not that means, you have to prevent your material from corrosion, from wear and from damage also because of the stresses coming because of the particle movement. So, plain carbon steel wires are used for general purposes, but for corrosive atmospheres stainless steel wires are used. That means, when the atmosphere is corrosive if your water pH is little bit acidic if you have some kind of your corrosive atmosphere because of the uh, your say surrounding environment if they are producing some kind of your, your acidic fumes then you have to use the stainless steel wires to uh, avoid frequent maintenance related issues. Other types of metal wires commonly used are brass, bronze, monel metal which is a nickel copper alloys and different types of aluminum alloys. Wires or threads made of plastics material especially polyurethane are increasingly being used for areas where strong acidic, caustic or wet environments prevail. So, these days the wires are even made of plastic materials. So, the material selection for your even your wire material that is very crucial part that what it is made of and there is no uh, fixed rule for that it is dictated by the environmental conditions, the surrounding environmental conditions, it is your material that is in the sludgy form what you are say it's actually processing through the screen surfaces, what is the characteristic of that and then what type of particle you are processing at what sizes, what is the abrasive characteristic of those particles. This will all determine that what type of material you should use for making the oven wares. When screens are oven with straight profile wares with circular cross section the wares have a tendency to move during the screening operation. Crimped wares help to lock the wares in place that means, if you are having your straight wares like this and say oven like in your horizontal and your say vertical directions. And so, what will happen when the particle tries to flow? So, that there will be some displacement of the wires. So, you will have your aperture of various uh, say dimensions. So, your screen efficiency will be hampered. So, for that what we should do that is the joints that is where the intersecting points between the two wires which is going to in the horizontal direction and the vertical direction that should be crimped. Waves with double crimped wires are now common that is to further prevent it from say the lateral movement or vertical movement of your wires. 
uh, these days the double crimped wires are also used. For smoother operation, the weave is designed to provide a flat top. That means the surface should be flat. The patterns of weaves are usually square. That means the apertures are normally square, but you can also use the rectangular weaves. Many a times we use rectangular weaves with a length to width ratio of two or more, in the uh, which are very common in the bindle industry. A very important issue for this openware screens are the available aperture. That means, what is the available aperture per unit area of screen is the most important criteria of screens, because your screening efficiency will largely depend on how much of the aperture area you have created or you have provided per unit length so or per unit area. So, the available aperture per unit area of screen is the most important criteria of screens, but how do we calculate this available aperture area. So, the apertures may be determined if the diameters of the wires are known. So, when you know the diameters of the wire and we said at the beginning that the diameters of the wire they should be identical they may differ from your say what is in the vertical direction or what is in the horizontal direction, but they have to be fixed for uh, uh, say for all the screens whatever you are making. You should not change it frequently, because what will happen then the your aperture area will be different and you cannot control your product quality. So, for a square opening if we say that the L A is the aperture length. What does it mean? Now, suppose I have got a square opening like this. So, this is the opening area. So, what is the your aperture length and suppose the thickness of the wire is d w. So, what is the available area? What is the available aperture area? So, a 0 if we denote it. So, a 0 is the open area expressed as percent. So, it should be l a that is how much is the uh, so length L a by L a plus d w whole square. So, that means, uh, it is what is the say area of a square that is your area square uh, that, that is your length square. So, that is L a square divided by L a plus d w whole square. So, this will give you d w is the diameter of where of horizontal width of bar or plates if used and L a is the aperture length. So, using this formula if I know the d w that is the where uh, thickness we can calculate that what is the available aperture area. If we look at this figure this is what a basically a open wire. I am trying to show here. You see this, this is a, a rectangular opening and this is what now you say that you have got different wire diameter for the uh, your say wire which is in the horizontal direction they their diameter differs from your the diameter what you have in the vertical direction of the wires. Okay. Now, if L a 1 is the length of the opening of the aperture in the or, or the width of that aperture and L a 2 and L a 1 is in the horizontal say vertical direction that what is the aperture you are giving. So, what is the length of this that is your open area. So, what will be the opening open area? So, A 1 will be this is the open area. So, that is L a 1 into L a 2 will be the area inside this. Now, the aperture area is basically what you have to take because it will be there will be another screen here there will be another aperture here. So, normally the 50 percent of each wire width is be used for each aperture. So, if the d w 2 is the width of this 
square and if the d w 1 is the width of this square. So, what will be the length of this if I go up to this 50 percent of that. So, it will be l a 2 plus d w 2 because half of this and half of this will give you d w 2 and this one will be l a 1 plus d w 1 because half of this and half of this. So, what will be the area for that? So, that is l a 1 plus d w 1. So, that is the your length here from here to here that is l a 1 plus d w uh, it should be actually the d w 1 and then this is l a 2 plus d w 2 that is from here to here. So, the a 0 should be the area available here that is l a 1 into l a 2 divided by l a 1 plus d w 1 multiplied by l a 2 plus d w 2 and you have to express in percentage. So, that is multiplied by 100. So, if I know the wire diameters and if I have a screen and I know the wire diameters or maybe we can measure it physically the wire diameters and then we can measure the opening that how much what is the say dimension of the length and the width of the your available aperture and then we can calculate that what is the available aperture area we are having. Now, let us see that that we are discussing many times about the size with a unit called mass. Now, these days we try to use it with directly with a micrometers or meters or millimeters like that meters uh, we do not have any screen in that length. So, but it is also conventionally being used that is one unit it is called the mess. Now, what is that mess? So, mess is basically of a screen is the defined as what is that your how many numbers of holes are there per unit length. So, in terms of so mass of a screen is defined by the relation 1 by L a plus d w. L a means is the uh, opening a opening length plus d w is the wire thickness. So, 1 by of that uh, for measurement in inches that is per linear inch how many uh, open uh, say apertures you have. But if I convert it into millimeters, so 1 inch is equal to 25.4 millimeter. So, m will be the mesh to millimeter conversion will be 25.4 divided by L a plus d w for measurements in millimeters. Mesh size of square opening will then be we can easily calculate that for a square opening will be the say the mesh size. So, it is expressed as 25.4 square a 0 divided by 100 l a square. Where from will you get it? No, this is the formula for say mesh, uh, mesh size for your square opening and you just put this value l a plus d w and you replace it with um, the equation that is l a plus d w is equal to say m by 25.4 and then you replace it you get this value. So, you can easily convert it into this form. So, the mesh size of square opening m is 20 square root of 25.4 square a 0 divided by 100 l a square. <coughs> this is an example through which I will show you that how to calculate this opening area and the mesh size of a screen. The question is a stainless steel open wire screen with a square aperture. So, what we are saying that it has got a square aperture had an aperture 3.18 millimeter that means, the length of this or the uh, say uh, the square aperture the length is equal to width. So, that is, is equal to 3.18 millimeter. The diameter of the wire is 
1.2 millimeter. Now, if I ask you to determine the percent open area when the screen was operated in a horizontal position. So, what I have to do? So, percent open area A 0 is equal to L A by L A plus D W whole square into 100 that is the formula I have seen and it is very easy formula because how much is the opening area and what is the total area it has consumed. So, divide by that into 100. So, L A by L A plus D W whole square into 100. So, L A is that is the length of that square aperture is 3.18 and your D W that is the watt thickness is 1.2. So, we can write 3.18 divided by 3.18 plus 1.2 whole square into 100. So, that will give you 52.7 percent. So, that is the opening area when the screen is in horizontal position. Second question is the percent open area when the screen was operated at a slope of 20 degree. So, what will happen because when it is at a slope and the material is falling like this. So, you are not getting the entire area. So, it is actually a, you have to make some correction with the angle. So, what is that correction you have to make? Now, here for an inclined screen effective percent area that is is equal to a 0 cos theta. So, it will be a 0 cos 20 and you put the value of a 0 52.7 and get the value of cos 20 multiply it you will get 49.5 percent. Now, you see that when the screen is at a gradient. So, your available aperture area reduces. So, now when it is when the aperture area gets reduced why should I have a screen in an inclined position, but there are other advantages that you can use the gravitational force for material transport, because the material has to flow over the screen surfaces. So, when it is at a gradient because of the gravity the material will automatically start flowing, but if it is horizontal it is very difficult for the particle movement. So, normally the industrial screens therefore, Although we know that the available your aperture area will be reduced, but still we try to operate it at a gradient normally. The third question was that is what is the mesh size of the screen? That is if I convert this into a mesh size, what will be the mesh size of the screen? So, this is a square opening. So, if you remember the formula that is m is equal to square root of 25.4 square a 0 divided by 100 l a square. So, uh, put the value of a 0 is 52.7 and l a is 3.18. So, when you put it you get approximately 6 mesh. So, that is how we can convert it from the opening or vice versa that is if I have mesh we can calculate the uh, in inch in say millimeter or in micron that what is the conversion. So, this is how we can use this for simple formulas that. So, now if I want to increase the say suppose the your capacity of a screen without changing the dimensions of that that is your external dimensions. So, what do we have to do? We have to increase the percent open area. So, how do I increase the percent open area? That is a challenge that is can we have a, a reduction in my wire thickness? Can I use a better material for the wire where even uh, in, in place of 1.2 millimeter if I use a 1 millimeter thickness wire, but that will give you the sufficient strength uh, to withstand those your um, say wear and tear related issues. So, there we can go for some replacement of the materials and we can change the wire thickness. So, this is how we can basically increase the o percent open area that is one of the solutions. There is another there are another solutions are like how these apertures are being basically oriented that is whether they are in the square 
uh, your uh, say spacing you have or what kind of spacing you have. Um, so, let me see if time permits we will discuss that also. So, now what are the different types of screens? So, we have discussed about the screen surfaces so far and you have seen that for robust screen that is for grizzly you have a different material for using and you use a different type of uh, your design. For medium uh, sized particle separation we normally use open wire screens and even for that we have to know that how much is the uh, percent open area and how the percent open area will change if I have your square aperture or if I have a rectangular aperture. So, that is what we have discussed that is how we can calculate and we have also dis discussed that how we can convert the micron to mesh or millimeter to mesh sizes or vice versa. Now, let us discuss on some of the, the various types of screens what we use. So, the usual industrial screen is either a stationary or dynamic type that is your screen could be stationary or it could be dynamic also that means, you may be vibrating that also or you may be shaking that also. So, depending upon that screen type you can categorize them as stationary and straight that means, they are stationary screen and they are straight screens. Number 2 stationary and curved they may be stationary, but the screen may be curved like this. Then the screen may be straight, but they may not be stationary they may be vibrating and these are all basically the designs uh, will the screen type will again depend on what sort of material you are trying to uh, say, say do sizing and that at what rate and how much of accuracy or precision you are looking for. Then vibrating and curved even it can be curved and it can be vibrating or cylindrical and revolving that is it can be cylindrical type and it can be revolving. So, that is there one varieties of screen are also there. So, we will discuss briefly about some of them. Now, stationary and straight screen surfaces if you look at you see that this is a, a schematic of a stationary screen and a straight screen. Okay. Now, these are tapered like what we have shown it in Grizzly. So, this is just a schematic representation of a Grizzly screen let us assume that. So, this is tapered for the free flowing um, uh, to improve the free uh, flowing characteristic of my particles, but now you see that that here the a the particle a and particle c they are prevented from passing through because a is the larger particle in size than the aperture a is a larger particle than the aperture. So, no way it can pass through, but look at the c c is elongated in one dimension greater than the size of the opening. Now, what will happen this particle the c even it can pass through if you change its orientation that is if if it is falling inside the screen aperture in this in this pattern then they will that particle will eventually pass through. So, the question comes that whether this particle will pass or retain that depends on its orientation. So, what we have to do that is we have to give the maximum chances of this particle to change its orientation, so that it passes through. The particle C will however, pass through in any subsequent encounter if it approaches the screen at a suitable angle as shown in aperture d. That means, there is no guarantee that it will uh, say continue to report in the uh, your uh, say oversize as oversized materials. It is dictated by the material property. So, the screen has nothing to do it is the material safe. So, 
So, that is where the shape factor is coming into picture. Particle size b will always pass through because it is finer than the aperture. So, what I try to show here that is the both shape and size are of importance in a screening operation. So, it is not only although we are trying to separate particles based on size, but you cannot ignore the effect of your particle shape. So, what, we, what is the lesson learned that when we have your uh, if you know that your particle are having elongated uh, your type of shape majority of your particle, then you have to do something you have to change the design of your screen. So, that this elongated particles you are giving maximum opportunity to have close interaction with the aperture to decide finally, that whether it will pass or whether it will retain that means, you have to give them equal opportunity. How you can do it? One way is to lift them up. How you can lift them up? That is you can lift them up while vibrating the screen surface. So, the particle will be lifted and when they are falling they may change their orientation and then they may pass through. But when you have this type of particles it is very difficult to have a consistent product quality. Particle sizes that are near to the aperture size are the most difficult to screen. Although ideally the particles which are basically smaller than the aperture size they should pass, but say suppose my aperture size here is 25 millimeter and I have a particle of 24.9 millimeter. So, whether that particle will pass or will uh, retain although ideally it should pass because it is finer than 25 millimeter, but these are the particles which takes much much time to finally, decide that whether I will pass or not. And it also depends on how you have measured that 24.9 millimeter, because uh, we said that we have discussed that your definition of particle size is not uh, well accepted there are various uh, your uh, definition. So, what is that size you are referring to that 24.9 millimeter. Now, it is a general observation that particles having a size 0.75 to 1.5 times the aperture are the most difficult to screen. That means, if I have an aperture of 100 micrometer, so it is the particle size in between 75 to 150 micrometer, these particles will take much longer time in this uh, to decide that whether we should report to the uh, oversize fraction or undersize fraction. And this is the near uh, size materials which create lot of trouble. So, the screening efficiency largely depends on that how effectively you are able to uh, say uh, your size these, these near uh, size particles. So, because these are the most time consuming and otherwise what will happen sometimes they may report to the undersize fraction, sometimes they may report to the oversize fractions and they are suppose the relative uh, percentage and the total uh, your uh, say population if they are significant like 40 percent. So, what will happen you will have some kind of inconsistency into your product size either as a oversize or a undersize material and your downstream processes will be having lot of problem in uh, say maintaining a consistent product quality through their processes because your feed rate will be changing. We will continue this discussion um, we have to discuss many other things related to screen. So, till then thank you very much.